Hi everyone, myself Shivangi Desai. I am your instructor for the video series of Python for Data Science. Today's our topic is Magic Functions. So let's get started. Well, Magic Commands or Magic Functions are one of the most important enhancement that IPython offers compared to the standard Python shell. Thus, Magic Commands are intended to solve common problems in data analysis using Python. There are mainly two types of magic functions, which are line magic and cell magic. So let's understand this concept in practical session. So as we discussed, there are two types of magic functions, that is line magics and cell magics. The line magics are denoted by a single percentage sign as a prefix and it operates on a single line of input. Whereas the cell magics are denoted by double percentage sign as prefix and it operates on multiple lines of input or we can say it operates on the entire cell of Jupyter Notebook. So let's first understand line magic functions. So the first magic function is auto call. Now this auto call magic function makes a function automatically callable without having to use parenthesis. Now there are three possible parameters. 0 to deactivate auto call, 1 is a smart mode and 2 is always on which is activate the auto call. So first here I am calling this auto call off which means I am setting it off. So let's run this code. So as you can see the output shows that automatic calling is off. Now here I have defined a function add in which I am taking two parameters that is a and b. I'm performing addition operation on both the variable and storing the result inside the variable c. And at last we are printing the summation using this print function. Now to call this function we have to use the function name along with the parameters inside the parenthesis. Which means if I want to execute this line of code I have to use the parenthesis and pass the required arguments. So let's run this code. So as you can see here, it returns summation is 20. But what if I remove this parenthesis from here? So when I remove this parenthesis and run the same code, it will show me an error that is invalid syntax. But if I want to run this exact line of code, which means if I want to call this function without the use of parenthesis, then I have to use this auto call magic function. The auto call magic function with one, which is the smart mode, will allow you to call the function without the use of parenthesis. So here, when I run the auto call magic function with argument one, it returns the output automatic calling is smart, which means it runs in a smart mode. So now I'm calling the same function with the argument without parenthesis. So when I run this code, it will return me the result in, instead of syntax error. So this is the significance of auto call magic function which allow you to call the function without the use of parenthesis. Next is auto magic. If you want to use the magic function, it is necessary to call those magic function using the prefix that is the percentage sign. But if you want to disable the requirement of using the prefix along with the magic function, auto magic can be used. There are two modes of auto magic that is 0 and 1. 0 to deactivate the auto magic and 1 to activate the auto magic. And if I call the auto magic magic function without any argument, it will toggle. Toggle means if it is already on, then the auto magic will set it to off. And if it is already off, then it will set it to on. So here I am calling this auto magic without any argument, so it will toggle. So when I run this code, it will return me that auto magic is off. Why? Because it is already on. So now we require to use this prefix with the magic function. Now I'm calling this auto magic function with the argument one, which means I'm activating the auto magic. Now the auto magic is on. So we do not require to use this prefix along with the line magic functions. Next is PWD. PWD magic function will display the current working directory or we can say present working directory. So when I run this magic function with this prefix, it will display the present working directory that is C users admin PDS notebook and SYD. 
Now, if you want to change the directory, which means you want to traverse through the folders inside the current folder, then we can use this CD. CD stands for change directory. So, along with this CD line magic function, we have to pass the path of the directory that we want to traverse. Now, inside the SYD folder, I have the next folder PDS. So, if I want to traverse to that directory, I just have to write down the name of that particular folder. So, I am writing CD space PDS. So, when I run this code, it returns me the entire path in which it is currently traversing. That is C uses admin PDS notebook SYD and PDS. So, you can check the difference that in the previous output, the present working directory returned me the path till the SYD folder only. But now, after performing the CD line magic function, my current path is C users admin PDS notebook SYD and PDS. As my code is stored inside the SYD folder, I have to change the directory back to the SYD. So that's why now I'm passing the entire path of my directory that I want to traverse in. So using the CD line magic function, I'm passing the entire path. And when I run this code, now it will return me the current folder in which right now we are traversing. Next is dehist. The dehist line magic function will print all the directories that we have visited in the current session. So when I run this line magic function, it returns all the directory that we have traversed in the current session. Next is edit. The edit line magic function will set the default text editor of current operating system for editing a Python script. Now as we are working on the windows right now, the current text editor is notepad. So when I run this edit line magic function, it will set the notepad as a default text editor for the Python script. So let's run this code. Now next is env line magic function. The env line magic function will list all the environment variables that are present in the system. So let's run this code. So it returned a list of environment variable of the system. Next is ls magic. The ls magic, which is list magic magic function, will display all the magic functions that are currently available. So when I run this ls magic line magic function, it will return me the list of all the line and cell magic function that are available in this Jupyter Notebook. Next magic function is run. The run magic function is used to run the Python script from within the IPython shell. In simple words, currently I am using the Jupyter Notebook called unit 3 underscore 2 underscore magic functions. Now, from this Jupyter Notebook, if I want to run a particular script, say for example, hello.ipynb, then I can do that using this run line magic function. So with run, I have to pass the file name along with the extension. So when I run this code, it will return me the output of the code that is written in the hello.ipynb file. So you can check here that hello file contains print. This is Jupyter Notebook. Next magic function is alias. This magic function will assign or display an alias for a system command. So when I run this code without any argument, it will display the present alias of the system. So let's run this code. So as you can see, there are total number of eight aliases and it written all the alias name of the system. Next magic function is recall. So when I execute this recall without any argument or without any parameter, this function will execute the previous command, which means it returned the result of the previous command that we have executed. So in our case, we have executed the command alias. So when I run this recall without any argument, it will return the output of the code alias. So let's run this code. So you can check here, the output is exactly same as the magic function alias. The only difference is the output is returned in a new Jupyter cell. Next magic function is matplotlib. A matplotlib is a library that is used for the visualization purpose. It is used to plot the different graphs or bars. Now here matplotlib is a line magic function and not the library. 
So when I call this matplotlib line magic function, it will activate the matplotlib interactive support during an IPython session. However, it does not import the matplotlib library. So there are multiple possible parameters that we can pass along with the matplotlib. Right now I am passing inline. So when I run this code, it doesn't return any output, but it will provide the internal support for the matplotlib library. Next is notebook. This notebook line magic function converts the current IPython history into an IPython notebook file with IPYNB extension, which means when I run this notebook line magic function, all the code that I have executed previously will be converted into a new Jupyter notebook. The extension of Jupyter Notebook is IPYNB. So, along with this notebook line magic function, I have to pass the name for the new file. So, let's run this code. Now, you can check here that there is a new file called Not Demo with the extension IPYNB is created. And if I open the file, you can check it contains all the magic function that we have executed in our current file, right? So it stores the history into the new notebook file. Next is precision line magic function. So this precision line magic function will restrict a floating point result to specified digit after decimals. Let's understand this with an example. So here I'm first importing our library math and I'm printing the value of pi. So you can check here the value of pi contains multiple floating point values. But I want to restrict all this floating point value. In that case, we can use this precision line magic function. Along with this line magic function, we have to pass an integer value. This integer value represents that how many points will be printed after the floating point. So again, I'm running the same code that is import math and math.py. So when I run this code after the precision, you can check now my output contains only three floating point value instead of this many because we have called this precision line magic function. Next is time. This time line magic function will display the time required by IPython environment to execute a Python expression, which means it returns the execution time of particular Python expression. So here in our example, I'm using this time line magic function along with this expression. Now in this Python expression, we are taking a range of five lakhs and taking the sum of all the values inside that list. So when I run this code, it will return the execution time of that particular expression. That is 41.8 microseconds. Next is who. The who line magic function will print all the interactive variables with some minimal formatting, which means it will return all the variables of the current file. Right now in this code, I'm taking some variables that is one integer, one list and one floating point and storing it inside the A, B and C variable. Now when I call this line magic function who, it returns me all the interactive variables that is A, B, C, which we just defined and along with that, add and math. Add is the function that we defined in very first code and math is the library that we imported to print the value pi. So all these are some of the example of the line magic function. Now let's discuss cell magic function. So as we discussed the cell magic function required double percentage sign as prefix and its effect is applicable on multiple line of code. So first cell magic function is HTML. Using this cell magic function, we can embed the code of HTML inside the Python script. So in this example, first I'm calling the saddle magic function using the prefix double percentage sign. Next, I'm using the HTML tag inside my Jupyter notebook. The tag that I'm using is font with the size 5 and color red and I'm printing the value Python for data science. So when I run this code, it will show Python for data science with the effect that I have specified inside the font tag, right? Next is JS or JavaScript. The JS or JavaScript cell magic function will allow us to embed JavaScript code in Jupyter Notebook. So here, I'm first calling the cell magic function JS 
and then I have specified the JavaScript code which is a function to add two integer values and the result will be represented using an alert. So when I run this code, it will show this pop-up or we can say alert which displays the sum. So value is sum is 50 because we have passed the value 20 and 30. So in this way we can embed the JavaScript code inside our Jupyter Notebook. Next is write file. So if you want to write another file from this current Jupyter Notebook, you can call this write file cell magic function. Along with this write file cell magic function, we have to specify the name of the new file along with the extension. So here I'm giving the name demo and the extension is .py as I'm creating a normal Python file. Now inside that file, I'm just passing a statement print hello world. So when I run this code, it will simply create the demo.py and when I check here, it will show this demo.py file which contains print hello world. So in this way, we can use multiple line and cell magic function. That's it for this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.